Okay, so we've seen now how to consume provider state within a stateless widget by using the special consumer widget class that Riverpod gives to us, which gives us access to that ref argument, right? And on that, we can use this watch method to access and watch the provider states. And then we can use that within the widget itself, which we do. But what about accessing a provider within a stateful widget? Well, it's actually not too dissimilar, but there are just a couple of small differences. So let's open up the cart screen, I think it is, which is a stateful widget, yep, to go through the differences. First of all, we don't extend the consumer widget class like we did for a stateless widget, but instead we extend one called consumer stateful widgets, which we'll do in a moment. We also get access to a consumer states class, which we need to use as well, instead of the bog standard state class right here. And then once we've used those, we automatically get access to the ref object inside the build method. And this time within a stateful widget, we don't need to accept that as an argument to the build method. We just get access to it automatically. So let's update this stateful widget then to be a consumer stateful widget instead. So let's come over here and get rid of this and say consumer stateful widget. Click on this, it auto imports this package for us, which we need. And then down here, we need to use something called consumer state instead of just state. So let's say consumer state and click on that. And then let's do the same thing over here, consumer state. And there we go. So now we get access to the ref object inside this build function. And like I said, we don't need to accept it this time as an argument. So let's just use it by saying final. And then what I'm gonna do is use the other provider this time. So if you take a look inside the products provider file, we have the reduced product provider. So I'm gonna copy that and go back over here. I'm gonna call this variable cart products though, because essentially we're in the cart screen and later on we'll be outputting cart products instead, not just the reduced ones. So let's set that equal to ref, which we get access to automatically, then use the watch method on that to watch a provider. That provider is gonna be the reduced product provider. Now we need to import this from that file, that products provider file for this to work. But now we have that, we have a value for cart products and we can use that now inside this template. So we're gonna output them inside this column. Now, because we have a list of products right here, we actually want to map through those and output the children based on that. So instead of hard coding a list right here, we're gonna say that children is gonna be cart products, and then we're gonna use the map method to return a bit of template, essentially or a widget tree for each one. So we are going to take in each product into this callback function, and then inside here, return a bit of template for each one. Now. We get a red squiggly line right here, and that's because this doesn't return a list, and we expect a list right here. So we can just use to list right here to return a list. We still get a red squiggly line, and that's because we're not returning anything inside here, I think. So let's return something, and it's gonna be a container that we return right here. All right, we still get a red squiggly line. Methods can't be invoked in constant. All oh, right, okay. So we have this constant right here, which we need to get rid of. Cool. Okay, so inside this container then, we want to basically output a row for each of the products. Now, before we do that, we're gonna add some padding to the container. So we'll say padding is gonna be const edge insets, and then only the top and bottom. So top is gonna be 10 pixels, and the bottom is gonna be 10 pixels as well. After that, we need our child, which is gonna be a row, and inside here, we need some children, which is a list of widgets. All right, so like I said, for each product inside this list, we want a row. And inside that row, we want, I think, three things, an image, we want the title and the price. So what I'm actually gonna do is just copy and paste this from my course files because we know how to do all this. So we have the image.asset, which we use the product here for and use the image property on that. So that's the path to the image. Then we give it a width and height as well. Then we have a sized box with a width of 10 pixels, just to give us some space after the image before the product title, which we output next. And then we have an expanded widget with a sized box inside it. And what that does is fill up the row space. So this sits on the very right of the row. So we're gonna have the image and the title on the left, 
And then on the right, we're going to have the price way over here. So if we save this now and then go to the cart page, hopefully, yep, we can see all the products in the cart. And these are all the ones that are less than 50 pounds in price. So you can see it's filtered some of those out. But either way, that's working now. We have consumed a provider inside a stateful widget by using this widget right here, consumer stateful widget, or this class rather. And then this thing right here, consumer state in both of these instances. And then we get access to the ref automatically inside the build method where we watch that provider, we grab the data from it and we use it down here. Awesome.